हेलो गाइस, आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग गुड आई एम विशाली की कान एंड वी आर डिस्कसिंग द वी एल एस आई टेक्नोलॉजी इन दैट वी आर डिस्कसिंग द एचिंग सिस्टम सो इन द प्रीवियस वीडियोस वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस द बेसिक्स ऑफ द एचिंग द टाइप्स ऑफ एचिंग वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस अबाउट द वेट एचिंग I have already told you what are the various equipments and why we are using the particular equipment. What are the batch type of systems and what are the single wafer systems? If you have still not watched the previous videos, I, it is highly recommended that you go and watch the previous videos also. Then come to this video. So today we are going to discuss in detail about the plasma etching process. Okay. So I hope now you know at least what is plasma. If you have still not watched the previous video where I discussed about the plasma. Plasma. At least watch it first. Okay, so now I am uh, considering that you know what is plasma and you know what is plasma etching process. Okay, so now coming to the advantages of the plasma. So if I am using the etching through the plasma process, so it is giving me highly controllable etch rate that I have already discussed. If I can change the ion energy, the ion energy will be directly related to the H rate and this is how I can control the H rate. I can change the ion energy with the RF power knob. I have already told you this. It is giving me good selectivity if I am using the combination of ion bombardment as well as the chemicals. So selectivity can be improved. It is giving me an isotropic H profile. So this is the reason we are focusing in detail about the plasma etching. Now coming to the disadvantage. It is expensive and a complicated system. Okay, so we require vacuum, we require RF power, we require robots, we require electronic chunk and all so all of these things are increasing or adding on to the cost of the system so I hope now you understood it so now coming to the mechanism what is the H mechanism what are the requirements so if I am using the oxide H okay so if I want to etch out the silicon dioxide so I will be using the damaging mechanism in the damaging mechanism I am using more of physical uh, uh, reaction than the chemical etching process okay so here I will be using the higher RF power for more of the physical etching and the lower pressure and the silicon and the metal etches using the blocking mechanism whenever I want to you make the uh, silicon isolations okay so if I want to make the STI layer okay or the I want to make the deep trench isolations then I will be using more of chemical reaction and for that I will be using the blocking mechanism it is uh, as I told you it is more chemical than the physical etching it requires less RF power because the physical etching is less so in the plasma etch we have uh, the dielectric etch we have single crystal silicon etch polysilicon etch and the metal etch and then we are going to talk about the summary in the last lecture so this is a series of lecture for the plasma etching process I hope you will be staying with me throughout these lecture series now coming to the dielectric etch so in the dielectric we want to etch out oxide or the nitride so if I want to etch out oxide I can have doped and the undoped silicate glass like we have PSG or we have borophosphosilicate glass. If I have the doped glass or doped silicate glass, I will be using the contact edge. The via edge can be used for the USG layer FSG or for constant dielectric material. So if I want to etch out nitride, I want to make the uh, short trench isolation or I want to make the bonding pad and for that I am using the nitride etch. So if I want to etch out the silicon dioxide, I will be using the fluorine. Fluorine is reacting with the silicon dioxide. It is making the SIF4 which is uh, easily removed from the uh, surface of the silicon dioxide as it's a gas and we are generating here the oxygen as the byproduct and for the generation of fluorine I am using the CF4 so uh, CF4 is a commonly used fluorine source and uh, instead of CF4 I can use NF3 and SF6 also so now coming to the facts about fluorine, fluorine uh, is having the symbol F, atomic number 9, atomic weight around 18.99. It was discovered by Henry Moisson at France, so discovered uh, at 1886. 
so now you can see all of the associated parameters the origin of name molecular volume velocity of sound refractive index it is also around one melting point boiling point thermal conductivity and application so in the application you can see it, it is used as a main agent for silicon oxide and the silicon nitride etching processes so this is the thing that we require now coming to the contact etch, I have already told you if I have doped silicate glass, the phosphosilicate glass or borophosphosilicate glass, then I can use the contact etch. In the contact etch, I have the silicon surface. The silicon surface is connected to the metal with the help of holes. Okay, so the contact etch is connecting the silicon surface to the metal with the help of holes. So this is why it is called the contact etch. It is connecting the silicon surface to the metal so now uh, here what i am using as the agent i am using cf4 as the main agent i can use chf3 as the polymer precursor to improve the selectivity okay i don't want any other uh, material to be etched out for that i am in increasing the selectivity and selectivity can be increased with the help of chf3 okay now we are using the argon argon to improve the damaging effect i hope you know the properties of the argon argon is a heavy atom and if i am using the argon ion it will be damaging more okay so it will be improving the damaging effect so some people also used o2 and hydrogen gas also so i require high selectivity towards uh, silicon or sili uh, silicide for this contact etching process okay i have already told you it is used to etch out psg or bpsg it opens the contact holes from silicon to the metal okay and this is how it is making the interconnection from the silicon to the metal with the help of holes so it requires high selectivity over silicide and also over the photoresist and you can see uh, the chemistry over here fluorine fluorine is reacting with the silicon dioxide uh, to form silicon dioxide is solid Solid and when fluorine is reacting with the silicon dioxide SiF4 is formed which is gas okay and we are generating the oxygen as the byproduct okay so you can see in this figure that this is the contact etch here we have uh, the P layer P layer is the doped silicon okay at the base okay so here we have the doped silicon layer the doped silicon layer is connected to the metal layer over here with the help of the contact etch okay so here also we have the contact etch so I hope now you are understood what is uh, contact etch and how the CMOS cross section is looking like with the contact etch. So now coming to the challenges uh, present in the contact etch. So we are using the holes to contact the poly side gate and to make the local interconnection. So if I am using the holes, it will be having half of the depth of the source and drain contact holes. So this is the first challenge here. It requires high borophosphosilicate glass or the phosphosilicate glass to the silicide selectivity. So high selectivity is desired which is uh, very uh, difficult to form and this is how it is it is a big challenge towards the contact etching so you can see over here this is how we have uh, the contact etching so this is uh, the tisi2 layer okay so here we have the sti layer okay and this is the delta t layer delta t is the difference okay so this is the difference so this is actually the uh, the layer in which i was not able to make the contact hole and this is the delta t okay so the t was the full layer where i had to make the contact but this is the delta t where the contact was not able to made now coming to the fluorine to carbon ratio i require fluorine to the carbon ratio greater than 3 for the etching purposes if the fluorine to the carbon ratio drops below 2 okay so at that time polymerization would dominate the etching etching will not happen only polymerization will happen if i have fluorine to carbon ratio very less than 2 okay so now when i am etching oxide so let's see what happens if i am etching out oxide or i am etching out silicon so there are two points etching out oxide etching out silicon if i am etching out oxide so the byproduct will be reacting with the carbon and it will be generating more and more of fluorine so now if i have more fluorine which means fluorine to carbon ratio will be increased which means etching will dominate if i am etching out silicon or silicide so oxygen will not be released fluorine is getting consumed 
consumed and consumed which means if I have lesser and lesser fluorine which means fluorine to the carbon ratio will decrease and if it is dropped below 2 then uh, we will be having the polymerization okay so polymer will be blocking the further etching process and this is how polymerization will be hindering the etching process so I require high BPSG to TISI2 selectivity okay so now coming to the various uh, uh, reactions present here so CF4 is uh, get giving me the fluorine so CF4 is dissociating in the plasma it is forming CF3 and the fluorine so now this fluorine is reacting with the SiO2 to form SiF4 that I have already discussed it is the gaseous uh, byproduct and this is how it is removed so here we have the oxygen also as the byproduct so now this fluorine will be reacting with the TiSi2 also and it will be forming TiF4 and SiF4. So I hope uh, you understood all of the reactions that are happening simultaneously for the contact edge. So you can see if I have the uh, bias, if I increase the bias then at uh, the lesser F2C ratio also the etching will happen. If I have low bias then at 3 at greater than 3 etching will happen at lesser than f2 c as lesser than 3 f2 c ratio polymerization will happen but if i increase the bias if i increase the bias at lesser than 3 f2 c ratio also etching can happen so this is how i can have the effect of bias also so now coming to the via edge okay so it is used to etch out usg layer Okay, so here uh, we are using the holes for metal to metal interconnections. Okay, so there we were using holes for the silicide or silicon surface to the metal interconnection. Here we are making metal to metal interconnection with the help of wire holes. Okay, so now we require high selectivity over metal and the photoresist. Okay, and again we need to know the fluorine chemistry for that. So you can see here we have the metal, here also we have the second metal this is the via H we are connecting the metal with the metal with the help of via H I hope now you understood the CMOS cro cross section so this part is also done uh, with the help of via H and this is also so I hope now you understood how we have the via H and the contact H so now it is uh, highly recommended that we should have a very high selectivity towards the photoresist and the via edge can be made with the help of the photoresist mask also. So here again we are using the fluorine as the main agent. Okay, again we are using the CF4 for the making of the fluorine. So CHF3 and argon again can be used and also O2 and H2 can be used to improve the selectivity and uh, we should avoid the metal sputtering. If I am using high ion energy the metal can sputter out and this we have to avoid. So if the metal is sputtering out also we are having the etching due to the via etching so we will be having dual demescence. So it is called the dual demescence etch. So dual etching will be happening metal will be etching due to uh, metal sputtering and we have already uh, fill fluorine to etch out the surface material. So we have dual etching which is called the dual damascenes etching. So this is the summary. Okay, if I have the hard mask like SI3 and 4 silicon nitride or silicon dioxide SiO2 I am using the contact etch for the uh, phosphosilicate glass or the borophosphosilicate glass. I am using the via etch for the USG and FSG layer and I am using the bonding pad for nitride and the oxide layer. Okay, so the etchants uh, here are CF4 and CHF3 for SI3 and 4 and SiO2. Okay, so for the contact etch again we have CH, CF4, CHF3 in the via also CF4, CHF3, in the bonding pad also CF4, CHF3 etchants. In the, in the hard mask, okay, in the SI3 and 4 layer or uh, silicon dioxide layer, the underneath layer is silicon, it can be copper, it can be gold, okay. So in the contact, the underneath layer is polysilicon or silicon only in the via, in the, the underneath layer should be metal only, in the bonding pad also the underneath layer should be metal only. So the end point, in this case it can be cal calculated using the CN 
and or the oxygen uh, ion concentration. Again, in the contact edge, it can be uh, calculated with the help of phosphorus, oxygen, or fluorine in the YIF with the help of oxygen, aluminium, and fluorine in the bonding pad with the help of oxygen, aluminium, and fluorine. So, these are the references. I hope you understood each and everything that I have discussed in this video. If you have still any kind of doubt, you can put the doubt in the comment and I will be trying to resolve your doubt as soon as possible. If you want to connect with me you can connect with me on the various social media sites i will be trying to reply you as soon as possible and i hope you if you like this video you will be pushing the like button subscribing to the channel and also you will be sharing it with your friends thank you so much